Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dorfler here with your new Daily Dose of Dorfler. Today, we are looking at Section 2 of Chapter 6, and that is going to be dealing with the conservation of momentum. Now, so far, we've been talking about objects, singular objects, and the momentum that they possess. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to have objects interact, and we're going to see how that interaction is going to, <clears throat> excuse me, alter the momentum of one another. And so we're going to have a couple of concepts that we're going to talk about today. We're going to have a new um, formula that you're going to need to write down. So make sure you have that. You want to have your calculator ready. We're going to go over just a few notes and then a few sample problems before I assign your homework for problem bank D. All right. So the objectives of this section, we are going to describe the interaction between two objects in terms of the change in momentum of each object, compare the total momentum of two objects before and after they interact, state the law of conservation of momentum, and predict the final velocities of objects after collisions given the initial velocities, force, and time, or any other um, portion of the new formula that you're going to have we could solve for, okay? Okay. So law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum of all objects interacting with one another remains constant regardless of the nature of the forces between the objects, which leads us to the following equation, M1V1I plus M2V2I. So those are the um, initial momentums of object one and object two. They are set equal to M1V1F plus m uh, to V2F. As those are the final momentums of both objects. As you see here, they are set equal to each other. This is where we get the idea of the uh, that momentum is conserved and we get the law of conservation momentum. Newton's third law leads us to this uh, conservation of momentum. If we look at these two images here on the right of the screen here, during the collision of these two bumper cars, the force exerted on each bumper car causes a change in momentum for each car. It could be, it causes for both cars to go to a complete stop. It could cause for one car to go backwards and the other car to continue forward. They could glance off to the side. Okay, lots of different things can happen, but the conservation is going to be, or the momentum is gonna be conserved. The total momentum is the same before and after the collision. Coffee time. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at a practice problem here. <clears throat> Sorry. First video of the day. Got to get the got to get the uh, motors moving here. All right. So we have a 76 kilogram boater initially at rest in a stationary 45 kilogram boat. Steps out of the boat and onto the dock. If the boater moves out of the boat with a velocity of 2.5 meters per second to the right, what is the final velocity of the boat? All right. So we know the mass of the person. We know the mass of the boat. We know how um, fast the individual got off the boat. We also know that initially that they were both stationary. Okay. So to help you kind of envision what's going on here, I've provided a quick little video for you to imagine. Okay. So as you see here, they're stepping off the boat onto the surface to the right. The boat, notice what happens to the boat. The boat gets pushed back towards the left. But as you see here, these individuals must be on a very slippery surface because that lady decides to go right back into the water. Let's watch it one more time before uh, we continue into our calculation here. Okay, again, they step off to the right. The boat goes to the left, okay? This lady stands still. And back into the water. Okay, that's it. That just, I was having a good time looking up uh, uh, videos that can help us imagine what's going on here. But really, what we want to focus on is what happens to that boat after they step off of it. Okay. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, we know the mass of the human. We know the mass of the boat. We know that they were both initially at rest. So they have an initial velocity of zero. Then you know the individual gets off at 2.5 meters per second to the right. We need to find out the direction and the uh, velocity at which the uh, boat goes after that individual steps off. So again, using our conservation momentum uh, calculate or uh, formula here. Okay, one thing we need to know is that that M1V1 
uh, uh, I and the M2V2I, again, they were set equal to zero, which means that the, um, the final uh, momentum of these objects had to also be equal to zero. So since we know that the initial was completely zero across the board, we can set the finals equal to zero. Then we are going to rearrange this simplified version of the equation to where we solve for V2F. Again, the velocity, the final velocity of the boat. And so, again, remember to keep signs when you go and switch, everything like that, because, again, signs help us with directions. So once we get it rearranged to where we have the two masses together multiplied by the um, <clears throat> initial, or sorry, the final velocity of the human, we plug in our numbers here, and we get negative 4.2 meters per second to the right. We're not quite done yet. Remember that with that negative sign, that is going to change our initial direction, okay? So our final, 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 final answer, you have to remove that negative sign and change the direction. So the boat will be traveling at 4.2 meters per second to the left. Again, Going back to that video, we saw that as those individuals stepped off to the right, that pushed the boat off to the left, and it seems to fit this same exact category or, um, scenario, okay? So again, change negative signs, remove them, change direction. So right now what I want you to do is open up your textbooks to page 209, okay, 209. We'll let you get there for a moment. You can even pause the video if you want to. Okay, 209. And we're going to need to get into this. Now, I like to do number one here just because it's kind of a goofy one. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. It is kind of a goofy one. <clears throat> um, so let's look at number one. A 63.0 kilogram astronaut is on a spacewalk. When the tether line to the shuttle breaks, I think that would make anybody freak out a little bit. The astronaut is able to throw a spare 10 kilogram oxygen tank in the direction away from the shuttle with a speed of 12 meters per second, propelling the astronaut back to the shuttle. Again, somewhat of a similar concept as what we just saw with the boat. Assuming that the astronaut starts from rest with respect to the shuttle, find the astronaut's final speed with respect to the shuttle after the tank is thrown. Okay. So again, hopefully you're looking at number one here. And we're going to dim this. All right. So, <clears throat> again, as usual, write down what we know. We know that I have the wrong problem pulled up here. Okay. We know that M, we're going to call M1. We're going to call that the astronaut, 63.0 kilograms. Okay. Our M2 would be the O2 tank, <clears throat> which is... 10.0 kilogram. We know that the um, in the, uh, the initial sorry the initial um, velocity of the O2 tank was zero meters per second, <clears throat> and we know that the initial velocity of the astronaut was also zero meters per second. And we also know that <clears throat> the final velocity of the O2 tank was 12 meters per second. So what we are trying to find is the final velocity of the astronaut. Okay. So again, write down what you know. There's a lot of information going to be in these problems. So again, M1 V1 I plus M2 V2 I is equal to M1V1F plus M2V2F. Again, we are looking for this right here. So we need to rearrange this setup to solve for, solve for V1F. So when we do that, we get V1F is equal to m one v one I plus M2V2 
i minus m to v to f all over m <clears throat> one f. So again, there's lots going on here, okay? But a lot of times when something's at rest, sometimes you can um, go ahead and just eliminate their calculation because anything really times zero is going to be zero. But you know me, I like to do the long way just so you see everything. So now we go ahead and put in our information. <clears throat> we have 63 kilograms times zero meters per second. Again, that's one of the instances where we could not put it in there, but I'm going to anyway. We have 10 kilograms times zero meters per second. Yet another, since again, just like we saw in our very um, first question is, um, you know, since everything they are both at rest initially, then we could just set the finals to uh, equal to zero. But, you know, what fun is that? Okay, we're here to write, right? Again, I don't care what you do. If you want to do the shortcut version, by all means. And 63.0 kilograms. Okay, so after you've solved all this, okay, <clears throat> basically you're going to have VIF is equal to negative 10 kilograms times 12 meters per second over 63 kilograms. Okay, VIF is going to equal, again, if you want to pause the video now, you can, negative 190, oh, sorry, 1.90 meters per second. And this is where it gets a little interesting, okay? This is where it gets a little interesting. What we're assuming, because I'll tell you what, the book actually gives me an answer of 1.90 meters per second, positive 1.9 meters per second, okay? That's not what we calculate. So the, I'm not going to be as, I'm not going to be picky on these because it doesn't indicate this. I'm making the assumption based off of what the book is giving me, okay? Again, we're talking about the velocity, the final velocity of the human, Okay, not the final velocity of the uh, oxygen tank. So we're assuming that the space shuttle, and you're going to love this, space shuttle is right here. The astronaut with its his or her big head is inside here. And, okay, and then the O2 tank is right here, and he's pushing it that way. That would mean that as the astronaut pushes the O2 tank to the right, it's going to cause movement of the of the um, astronaut back to the left. Okay, um, but again, it's it's so dicey. Like it's it's hard to imagine in this case. That's why I wanted to do this one because I wanted to show you like in situations where it is not clear which initial direction everyone's facing or going, okay? Just, just assume that the direction's gonna overall be positive, okay? Um, again, it doesn't even tell us which direction the um, <clears throat> O2 tank would be propelled because that would change everything, okay? So there's some issues with this question that I just wanted to do because, again, it bothers me when there's uh, it's not clear. Okay, so if you put negative one point nine zero or one point nine zero, I'm not going to care on, on this case. Okay, most cases will be clearly defined, so make sure you pay careful attention. Again, I hand review all these questions, especially when it comes to quizzes or tests. Okay, so just do your best. Next, let's go to, you know, let's go to mm, let's do number let's do number three, three A. 
3A says each croquet ball in a set has a mass of 0 0.50 kilograms. The green ball traveling at 12.0 meters per second strikes the blue ball, which is at rest, assuming that the balls slide from a slide on a frictionless surface and all collisions are head on. Find the final speed of the blue ball in each of the following situations. Okay, the A is the green ball stops moving after it strikes the ball. Okay. So again, we are in 3A. If you have your books, which you should, you know that M1 is equal to 0 0.50 kilogram. V1I is equal to, oh, what was it? Um, 12.0 meters per second. <clears throat> Again, that's the, that's the green ball. The velocity of the other blue ball initially was zero meters per second. The mass of the second ball, again, they're the same mass, 0 0.50 kilograms. Okay. And the final velocity of the green ball is zero meters per second. So again, using our initial formula that we've seen a couple times now, I'm going to kind of spit, uh, speed it up a little bit and not do the initial general formula, but I'm going to show you the shortcut version. So again, we're solving for V2F, okay? The blue ball after it was struck by the green ball, okay? So V2F, so we're going to have Vm1, V1I plus m 2 V2I minus M1V1, sorry, keep calling it I, uh, F all over M2. So again, once we've got that set up, go ahead and plug in your values here. <coughs> Excuse me. Do, 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 do. Let's see, we've got our M1, which is 0 0.50 kilograms. We've got our V1 at 12.0 meters per second. We've got our M2 at 0. Point, oh, sorry, yeah, 50 kilograms. We've got <clears throat> M2I, I'm oh, sorry, V2I, which was 0 meters per second, minus M1. Again, 0 0.5 kilograms going to running out of space here. And V1, which was zero meters per second, all over 0 0.50 kilograms. Sorry about running out of the room there. So after you calculate everything, you should get 12.0 meters per second. Now, there you have it. Now, if we look at part B, part B says the green ball continues moving after the collision at 2.4 meters per second in the same direction. So in part B, we have um, the final velocity of 2.4 meters per second. So instead of it coming to a complete stop, it has a velocity of 2.4 meters per second. So again, trying to figure out what the speed of the ball is going, the blue ball is going to be. Again, V to F, we're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have V1 I plus, oh, hold on. Hold on. I was showing you the, sh the shorter version I did. So again, we're going to have this same equation up here, but instead of um, zero for the um, final speed for your green ball, it's going to be 2.4, okay? And so you're going to have um, M1V1I plus M2V2I minus M1V1F all over M2. Go ahead and put in your values here. Again, you have 0 0.5 kilograms times 12.0 meters per second 
plus 0 0.5 kilogram times, <clears throat> excuse me, do, 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 V2, which would be 0, oh, sorry, uh, brrr, V2i is 0 meters per second minus, oops, you guys can't see that, minus M1 again, 0 0.5 kilograms, and V1f, which is now 2.4 meters per second, all over 0 0.5 kilograms. When you solve that, V2f is going to equal 9.6 meters per second. So what that means is the blue ball did not, basically did not obtain all the momentum of the green ball. Since the green ball continued going at 2.4 meters per second, the blue ball did not obtain all of it, the green ball's momentum. All right, one more. It's a little different than this one, okay? And that is number four, okay? Number four, a boy on a 2.0 kilogram skateboard initially at rest tosses an 8.0 kilogram jug of water in the forward direction. If the jug has a speed of 3.0 meters per second relative to the ground and the boy and the skateboard move in the opposite direction at 0.60 meters per second, find the boy's mass. So this is going to be a little different setup. Okay. So our initial mass of our first object, again, would be the boy and the skateboard. Okay. Together. But we have to figure out what the mass of the boy is. And so M1 is equal to 2.0 kilogram plus the mass of the boy, call that MB. Okay, this sum right here will equal the overall mass of the first object. Mass two is 8.0 kilogram. The initial velocity of the jug was zero meters per second. The final velocity of the jug was 3.0 meters per second. <clears throat> the initial velocity of the boy in the skateboard was zero meters per second. And um, the final velocity of the boy in the skateboard is negative 0 0.60 meters per second because it said it was in the opposite direction. So, again, doing our general setup here, M1, V1, I plus M2, V2, I is equal to M1, V1, F plus M2, V2, F. Okay? <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and put everything in there. Let's, let's not rearrange this just yet, okay? Let's, let's do a few things first. Let's just put everything in as it is sorted out because really our unknown is in this M1 right here, okay? So we have our M1 of 2.0 kilograms plus MB times zero meters per second plus the mass of the water jug, again, times zero meters per second equal to <clears throat> 2.0 plus MB times negative 0 0.6 plus 8.0 kilograms times 3.0 meters per second. Whew. Okay. So here it is all laid out. Okay, and so we know here that we have everything times zero. So to shorten this up a little bit, because as you can see, there is a lot of writing, I'm just going to have this set equal to zero, okay, and B times negatives uh, 0 0.60 meters per second plus 8.0 kilograms times 3.0 meters per second. 
<clears throat> All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and multiply this through. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Someone's at the door. All right. Sorry about that. Interruptions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of putting these numbers together. Okay. So zero is equal to um, negative 0.6 times 2 is negative 1.2. <clears throat> Um, kilograms times meters per second. Again, these units, that's got a kilogram there. Okay. Minus 0 0.6 meters per second times MB plus 8 times 3 is going to be 24.0 kilograms times meters per second. Okay. Get off of there. Get off of there. All right, so I've got everything kind of situated out here. So now I'm going to start doing a little bit of math. So again, 24 kilograms times meters per second squared minus 1.2 kilograms times meters per second squared is going to give me 22.8 kilograms, <clears throat> excuse me, kilograms um, times meters per second minus 0 0.6 meters per second times the mass of the boy. Now I need to solve for mass of the boy here. So I'm going to go and move this 22.8 kilograms times meters per second over to the left. So I get negative 22.8 kilograms times meters per second is equal to negative 0 0.6 meters per second times the mass of the boy. Divide both sides by negative 0.6, and we're going to get that the mass of the boy is equal to 38 kilograms. So there you have it. That one's kind of a long one. You're going to have kind of long questions in here somewhat. Okay. So just stick with it. All right. Um, here is your homework. I want you to circle the following, and these will be the ones that you actually do. You are to circle, for problem bank D, you are to circle questions one, question two, question four, and question 10. Again, one, two, four, 10. All right, one, two, four, 10. And there you have it. Okay, a little bit longer than I thought I was going to, but I really wanted to show you some um, examples here. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Until then, have a good day, and I look forward to seeing you throughout the week.